Hello, I'm Richard Knight, one of the vets at Northwest Equine Vets. I'm going to talk you through a brief demonstration of how to apply a lower lid bandage. First things first, right on the table in front of me are all the materials you are likely to need to apply your lower limb bandage. Assuming your horse has a wound, and that's the reason why we're applying a bandage, first of all you're going to need some dressing materials to put on. There are various sizes and types of dressing material, but they all work on the same broad principle, in as much as they are not designed to stick to any blood or discharge from the wound that you've got. The two types we have here are melalim and alevin. Both are non-adherent, they won't stick to the leg, but alevin is designed to absorb more fluid than melalim. I tend to carry both, but find myself using melalim a lot more than alevin, partly because it's a lot cheaper. Apply your dressing by opening the packet, and working out which side you wish to put on the skin. With melanin, it's quite easy. There's a shiny plasticky side and a dull cotton wool side, and you want to put the shiny side against the skin. This is the layer here that absorbs the fluid and stops it from sticking. Having applied our primary dressing layer, we then want to apply padding. And the trick and the key really with any bandage is plenty of padding. It's very, very easy to apply bandages too tight and cause more problems than you've already got if you don't have sufficient padding. Our second layer, after our dressing layer, is normally one or two of these. These are ortho bands or soft bands. Effectively, it's a thin roll of cotton wool that's sterile when you unwrap it. It's approximately three metres long and is relatively tight, but you can tear it if you need to to make it shorter. Having applied one or two layers of our ortho band, apply a small bit of tension with an elasticated layer to keep those on the leg. You don't want them blowing off or falling off if the horse moves halfway through. But the key here is not to put this on too tight. You can apply too much pressure too quickly and get pressure sores within a few hours. The next layer, and the most important one, is cotton wool. And depending on where you're bandaging and how much pressure you're applying, you can put on one, two, three, or even four layers of cotton wool. But obviously after more layers, the bandage will get bigger and bigger. I find it quite easy to have two thicknesses of cotton wool, a whole roll for doing sort of above the fetlock up to the knee, and a half width roll for doing beneath the fetlock down to the foot. The reason being that trying to wrap a whole roll of bandage material around a fetlock at that 45 degree angle can end up kinking and rumpling and looking a bit of a mess. Again, having applied our cotton wool, we then put on another layer of elastic dressing to keep that tight. And at this stage, depending on how many layers of cotton wool we add, we can begin to wind our tension in a bit harder. If you're looking at a horse with a suspected fracture, lots of layers and lots of tension, but because you've got the cotton wool, that pressure is spread out over the whole leg and won't pull tight in any one place. Finally, good old vet wrap, nice self-adhesive, um, but again, be very careful with this. You can put this on too tight, and vet wrap has this tendency that once you've applied it and the horse then starts to move, the vet wrap will move and occasionally wrap itself tighter still. So if in doubt, put this on a bit loose. And finally, assuming we're bandaging a lower limb down to and including the foot, I tend to put a gaffer tape bandage around the foot, partly to stop the foot from absorbing water and, de and debris, and also to stop it from walking up the leg. If you want to, you can put some elastoplaster around the top of the bandage to keep it in place, but if you're only wrapping from the hock or the knee down to the floor, they tend to stay in place quite well. Thank you for watching this short video on how to apply a forelimb bandage, and I hope you found it useful and informative.